Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. I hope this video finds you all doing well on this lovely Sunday at the time of the recording. Today, I have a really treat of a video for you guys. We're going to be highlighting Pompeo's brand new, new meta balloon miner deck. It has the recently buffed bats and the recently buffed mini P.E.K.K.A. And we're starting out with a bang here. We're, we're starting out with the good, re the really good replay. And it's going to be Surgical Goblin on the top, who actually won first overall after the bracket in my recent CWA Pro Alumni Tournament. That was a lot of fun. You can catch out the entire stream on Colton W83's Twitch videos on demand if you're curious. We're going to be covering Pompeo's deck though, not Surgical's. However, if you're looking for a good Lava Loon deck, give Surgical Goblins a try. There's no doubt about it. Lava Loon is back. As a matter of fact, air decks in general, like the one that Pompeo's playing as well, is definitely back in the meta. Why? I mean, there wasn't any big buff to air, so why are air decks all of a sudden really good again? Well, the answer is, you know, a few reasons, right? It's a butterfly effect, partially, because now that there's a lot of siege decks in the meta, now that there's a lot of ground decks with not a lot of air defenses, a much less three musketeers, many less night witches in the meta right now, it opens up the meta for air to shine again. When your opponent doesn't have good air defenses, of course, that's going to create a vacuum, which allows air players back into the meta. So that's kind of one of the observations. I actually made many observations. I'm going to share a screenshot with you guys right now. If you're curious on what my takeaways, anecdotal, anecdotal, meaning that it's just my opinion from one tournament, although it included a ton of pros. Over 50 contracted players took part in this tournament. It's too many to name, but I just wanted to thank uh, them all for playing. It was a lot of fun. So these are going to be highlights from that tournament. Again, Pompeo finishing third after the uh, the qualifier tournament. Very, very good player. You guys know him. He's still the king of the, the hill or the pro to be in the CWA Pro vs. Pro Series as well. And normal players, normal human beings would be in trouble here with the Lava Loon coming in the right lane, but Pompeo is a god. He's not a human. He's a god. He's a clash god. A clash god. No disrespect to any gods out there. He's a clash god. <laughs> but you can see he is doing a very adept job here defensively, and he's going to let that Lava Hound by Surgical go to his tower, and he knows he has to go hard on this left tower if he wants to stay in the game. So indeed he does. Sends in the Miner and the Balloon. Of course, you can combo the Balloon with either Miner or the Ice Golem as the classic variation, or you'll see Pompeo do this a lot. You can just send in a Balloon and Bats if you know your opponent does doesn't have a good air counter in hand. So here it comes, Balloon, not gonna get to the tower, but the death damage is gonna be in range, I think. Oh, I stand corrected. Not gonna be in range there. So at this point, we're close to kind of tied. Surgical with an aggressive Balloon right there does not get to the tower. He has to use the Elixir Pump on defense to try to distract Pompeo's Balloon, but look at this, guys. Miner goes in. Now we have a Balloon, a Miner, and a Mega Minion on the tower. That's gonna be GG. Pompeo takes this match against one of the game's best players both of these guys game's best players Pompeo and Surgical Goblin by the way did you guys know that Pompeo finished number one in the entire world last season using a similar balloon deck but a little bit different because we just hit balance changes so this is the updated version of the deck that Pompeo used to get number one in the entire world last season. I always get a little bit extra excited when we have Pompeo on the channel. I don't know why, I just really enjoy and, and respect his gameplay. Something about it, he just never seems to make uh, mistakes. That said, he does make one mistake in one of these matches, and he says oops as soon as he makes it. Anyway here, you're going to see another kind of new meta deck. There was a lot of mini P.E.K.K.A., there was a lot of uh, Ice Wizard in this tournament. Mini P.E.K.K.A. and Ice Wizard seems to be, along with Expo, seems to be the three big winners at tournament level standard after the balance changes. When you look at ladder, of course, mortar also enters the conversation. I haven't seen a ton of mortar at tournament level standards, but it's still early in the game. So by the way, guys, I've been trying to upload a little bit earlier to try to accommodate my Indian audience. I love you, my Indian viewers out there. Actually, believe it or not, India is the second most popular location 
for viewing CWA videos out there uh, behind the United States. So I just got to give a lot of love to my Indian viewers. Again, I'm going to try to accommodate you guys the best I can uh, with early upload times, but I will be traveling for the next four days. I'm actually going to Supercell headquarters in Helsinki. So I have pre-uploaded, pre-recorded content. I hope I can get that out at an early time. Anyway, you guys didn't come here to hear the state of the upload times at C for CWA's channels, but I just wanted to kind of touch base with you guys on that. So here we go against a beatdown deck, and this deck you know, can be a little bit tricky to defend, but we do have a number of viable defensive options. Of course, the mini P.E.K.K.A. being the big one against this tank here. Interesting fireball there by Pompeo, just trying to buy that mini P.E.K.K.A. more time to chop down that golem, also doing some damage to the other mini P.E.K.K.A. and the baby dragon as well and look at how good he did there that was a really good defensive stand by Pompeo the opponent here decides to lightning that looked like it might have been a good idea taking down that mini Pekka but check this out Pompeo knows he's gonna go super aggressive because the only thing the opponent had in cycle was the baby dragon Granted, they were able to cycle back to the Mega Minion, but not before the tower was down. So the thing with this deck is, it, it, it's interesting. My, I'm gonna mute my phone. Actually got a new MacBook, and my texts come through in my MacBook. And I don't know how to mute it because I'm a Luddite, so my apologies for the ring there. But you can see here, Pompeo just doing a good job on defense. What I was saying there is you do have a lot of defensive options in this deck. So although it's a rather fast deck, you can also treat it as a good counter-attack deck. But the number one thing you're going to be wanting to think about when you're playing this deck is keeping track of your opponent's air counters. So remember, keep track of your opponent's air counters. That way you know the best way to attack with your balloon. Let's go ahead and hop into another replay. And then yours truly will play a match. Uh... <clears throat> We'll see how that goes. <laughs> but you can see he's going against William252 here from Nova Team. Again, this is the very end of the tournament, so all these players did very, very well against basically all pro players, or mostly pro players. A couple of the general public who was also invited into this 1K tournament did really well. As a matter of fact, a couple of them finishing in the top 20. So shout out to you guys if you did extremely well. Even if you hit top 100, this is a lot. Top 10% in this tournament. Way to go, guys. So against this deck here, William was one of the only players at the entire top who could have any success with Graveyard, Splash Yard in this circumstance. You know, it's weird, guys, because... I'm seeing a lot of other YouTubers and, and even a few pros saying that Graveyard is still viable. And then I'm seeing a lot of people saying that Graveyard is dead. I'm a little bit on the fence, but just again, anecdotally, I didn't see much Graveyard having success in this tournament. And when you look at other major tournaments, RPL in the last couple days, I'm not seeing a lot of successful Graveyard decks. Now that's just the pros. These are like the top players in the game, the top 0.1%. So that doesn't mean that you can't have success with it at your level, but I am sensing that Graveyard has gone from way above average, like the second best win condition for, what, eight months, as Asopa tends to say, to a little bit maybe below average for Legendary. Does that make sense? I don't know. That's just my early, uh, my early kind of hypothesis on where Graveyard will fit into the new meta. I think it won't be one of the main win conditions. However... You know, I've been wrong many times before, so I could be wrong again. I don't want to deter you guys from playing a card that you love if you enjoy Graveyard. So here we go. Pompeo's one mistake of the entire match was using that fireball there on the E-Wiz when he didn't need to. Granted, he got a little bit of tower damage, so it's all okay. it's okay. But the balloon death damage would have already killed that E-Wiz. So Pompeo, oh my god, it's true. Pompeo can make a mistake. It happened, ladies and gentlemen, here on CWA. What are we, nine minutes or so into the video? There you go, Pompeo's one mistake. So anyway, here it comes, tacking the other lane. He knows the opponent only has E-Wiz for air defense. Oh, I stand kind of corrected there. He actually was able to cycle back to Baby Dragon using that tornado. But check it out, the D balloon this time actually will do damage to the tower, and Pompeo's not going to decide to use a fireball as well. So, Pompeo doing a good job, and look at that predictive Mega Minion. He knew the opponent was going to go all out into the left lane using bats to counter the graveyard. Two more reasons that graveyard isn't that good anymore. Number one is graveyard got a nerf. 
Number two is Bats got a buff. Number three is Ice Wizard got a buff. So there's a lot of great counters out there for Graveyard. And Pompeo knows it's GG at this point. He just needs the balloon death damage to get to that tower. Fireball coming in to add insult to injury. And three, two, one, boom. Zap and the bomb goes off at the same time. Now, I apologize, guys. I'm very sorry. But we're going to take a big step down into play level in terms of skill. And we're going to switch to me playing the deck. This is actually the first time and the only time, to be totally honest with you guys. I've been trying to grind out videos like crazy because to me, this is the most interesting time in the game, right? Uh, meta change, balance changes, a shifting meta. So this is where I like to just put out a lot of content to keep you guys up to date with how the meta is shifting. And if you guys want to play off meta decks, at least you'll know what you'll run into. If you want to play meta decks, well, you'll know it works, right? So here we go. We're going against a level 12, albeit he did have max cards. Uh, and my cards actually aren't max. And that's the problem that I have on ladder. Not to make excuses, everybody has this problem on ladder, except for, you know, what, 0.1%? Uh, I guess this elixir pump's not max, I stand corrected. But you can see, I decide to attack, uh, I have the hovering fireball here, and I decide to attack the elixir pump. I, I send in the mega minion as well, and he opts to fireball against it. Uh, but yeah, one of the problems I have on ladder is that I just can't crack the top uh, 1,000 on the last day of ladder because my epics are level 7. Not to complain, that's really high. It's higher than most people out there, but it makes it difficult to, for me to push over 6,000 trophies. So, But I will do a video with you guys. My epics are getting there. Most of them are already halfway to max, or like from level 7 to 8. But anyway, I digress. I did get the balloon to the tower. I got one hit off. I'm going to go ahead and lean on the mega minion here. We have two tank stoppers in this deck. Mini P.E.K.K.A. and Mega Minion. So, I only had three Elixir at my disposal. I opted for the Mega Minion. He sends in the Elite Barbs, a pretty aggressive move there at the bridge. This de deck actually deals very well with Elite Barbarians. You do have uh, quite a lot of DPS in the Bats now, the, the recently buffed Bats. You have the, uh, the Mega Minion, and of course you can distract with the Ice Golem, and you have Fireball. So really, there's a lot of options defensively in this deck. It's one of the reasons I actually really like the deck a lot. So I was able to get a lot of damage on that right tower. However, things will go south for yours truly in this match. So we'll see what happens here. I send in the balloon on the right, and I wanted to kind of combo it with the ice uh, golem, but that I think was probably a mistake. I probably should have just sent in the balloon and had my fireball ready, fireball zap for, uh, for the executioner. I probably would have been able to take down the tower or at least distract him with the miner like I did there. So that's where things start to go incredibly wrong for me. And then I I, I really do it. <laughs> I pull a ch I pull a chief pat with my fireball. However, uh, yeah, I, I missed the Executioner. I have to do some adept defensive moves to try to make up for my mistakes here. I used the Ice Golem to distract. I used the Mini Pekka and the Mega Minion to chop down the Elite Barbarians. And then I used the Bats in the Mega Minion on that Giant. Of course, things go very poorly. I still end up losing the tower. So a series of mistakes there by me. But hey, it's all about learning from mistakes. At least that's what I always try to do. And uh, number one is don't miss a Fireball, Ash, dude. The radius is like seven. It's not really, but you, you get the point. Uh, there's an excuse. You can make excuses for missing on a fireball, uh, on, excuse me, on a rocket. It's very difficult to make excuses for missing on a fireball. So here I have to fireball again to take down that right tower. And now I'm back in a position of authority. I'm able to drop my bats and my mega minion doing a lot of DPS on that giant. A matter of fact, the giant's only going to get one hit on the tower there. That's a max giant too. So I think that bats are incredibly good now, guys. I, I really do. You should consider adding them to your deck. I'm able to get a fireball off on these elite barbarians. Mini P.E.K.K.A. finishing off that second EB with that one swing. And now the tower is just in one more fireball range. I could have went super aggressive with the ice golem and the balloon in the pocket. However, I decide to go ahead and send in Miner, have a zap at the ready, and that's going to be a victory there. I really like this deck. I hope you guys have success with it as well. I wanted to thank all the pros who helped out for my CWI, C CWI, new channel. CWA alumni tournament and I want to sp send a special thanks to Colton for streaming it and also a special thanks to uh, Minhas for moderating it and being the uh, the marshal in tournament so guys thank you to Bren Chong my YouTube sponsor make sure you check him out in the description below thank you all for watching it means the world to me I hope you continue to have a great day and as always take care guys